Hi everybody, welcome back. It is Sunday, April 5th, and I have a regular floss tube update for everybody. So thank you for stopping by. I have some good things to show you today. And um, my first wonderful thing to show you <laughs> is I have a finish. So I finished Monk's Hood by Nora Corbett. And this is on a 28 count natural linen that I dyed myself to spruce it up a little bit. Um, and I think she's really nice looking. So I realized that I was pretty close to a finish on her and that I just needed to concentrate a little bit, spend a couple of days um, working on her. And I actually did the beading at the end because she's a relatively small piece, this being, you know, not a Mirabilia, part of her Nora Corbett um, Poison Pixies line. So anyway, I'm really happy with how she turned out and I'm really happy to have, um, I finished her in March and so far this year I have um, a finish in January, a finish in February, and now a finish in March. And so here's hoping to maybe continue a little bit in that, um, and to try to have like a finish a month. That would be amazing. So anyway, here's Monkshood. So since I finished something, of course I had to start something. Um, so I, I have never stitched a Joan Elliott and I love, love, love her. Um, and one of my acquisitions earlier this year was this, um, limited edition, you know, Joan Elliott kind of special book, which is amazing. And so I decided to start Autumn Fairy, which looks like this. Um, my first fiberlicious fabric of the month. I'm sorry, I don't remember the name of it. It's a 32 count opalescent linen. Seemed to be perfect for this. So pardon the hanging thread and like I barely got any stitches done. Um, but just a little bit of the face. However, I love the kind of purple and orange. I think everything will go really well. And you can kind of, yeah, you can see the sparkle kind of when I tilt it. Um, and part of my haul this week, I didn't have like a lot, but I had a sort of with, you know, Michael's and all the craft stores being closed around here. I ended up just ordering the thread and the beads in the cranic. There aren't that many, I think three beads and two cranics for this design, um, from one, two, three stitch, just in case I had issues with dye lot or, um, something like that. I just said, I'll just order it. So, you know, not too, too exciting, but, um, I wanted to make sure that I had all the materials for this. And so, yeah, it's been really, it's a really nicely patterned piece, except the, <laughs> the middle of the figure is right at the page break. So I made myself a working copy very carefully and like snipped, snipped, snipped up the two edges or at least one edge. And then I taped them together to try to make um, a larger paper pattern that I could actually work from because I hate when, you know, the pattern break goes down the middle of um, the design and constantly switching between pages or back and forth on a, um, a screen is a little bit cumbersome and creates for me at least creates a lot of errors that then I have to spend time fixing and then I don't want to stitch the project anymore. And that's happened with a couple of, I've had a couple of, um, patterns I've purchased on Etsy that I just kind of started. And before I could even like get enough to show you guys, I ended up kind of abandoning them because I needed to just sort of take time to print them out and kind of make my own pattern that didn't have the break going like straight down the middle so that any stitching, you know, I didn't want to stitch like exactly half of every motif and then exactly half. Um, but anyway, that's okay. Um, so I did that. That was my new start for the week since I had a finish. I also um, worked on my sampler, this from the Blackbird Designs Home for the Holidays called Christmas Garden. And I didn't do a lot on it. 
I, but I did finish another little motif. So this is um, 40 count earthen by Picture This Plus. And I have, um, it only uses four colors and I have switched these from whatever they were called for, I don't know what they were called for, to Gloriana Silks. And so I just ended up doing this motif right here, which is really pretty. And I found that um, I like to kind of do a motif and stop for a day or so and just, um, I don't like to kind of start a motif and not finish it, you know, relatively soon. So anyway, a little bit of progress, but it's turning out really pretty. I also spent a lot of time on my full coverage piece over the past couple of weeks. This is a heaven and earth design based on the artwork of uh, Frederick William Burton. This is called Meeting on the Turret Stairs. And so I'm stitching this on a 28 count cream Lugana 2 over 1 tent stitch with all the called for DMC, except I'm using Anchor Black instead of DMC 310. And here's where I'm at now. So I did quite a bit of fill in here. Um, some of the dress, some more kind of fill in here, and then the braid. And once I started stitching it, I I told myself, you better finish it before you film because it looked really, really strange. I mean, it kind of looks strange now. It seems to be coming out of nowhere. But um, it looked strange having like the fabric show through the middle. So I, um, I did make it a point to kind of stay up um, really late or early and finish stitching the braid so that I had, I don't know, I had some completion. Um, it just didn't look weird. I am a very much a natural night owl. And so even if I'm tired um, at night around 10 o'clock or 1030, I end up getting a second wind. And I just, I mean, if I do fall asleep early, I will often wake up after a couple of hours and then be up for a long time. So I really can't go to bed early anymore, no matter how tired I am. But I really was entranced with this. And I actually did a little bit more um, looking into this painting. It's at the National Gallery in Ireland. And I found out that the painter of this was friends with the novelist George Eliot, who wrote Middlemarch and Daniel Deronda and Romola and some other books. And she said of this painting that the man in the portrait, it's not really a portrait, the man in the painting was a person for whom a kiss is a sacrament. And I thought that was really nicely said and really romantic. And I think when I stitch this piece, I often think about a story that could be behind, um, that could be behind this. Now I know that uh, the painter actually based it on a Danish poem that had been translated at the time. And so for next week, perhaps I will be able to share a little bit of the actual backstory to this um, as well. So anyway, this is meeting on the turret stairs so far. Um, I did a lot of work on my Renaissance mermaid, so let me show you that. So here is what um, Renaissance mermaid will look like when she's done. And this is what she looks like now. So what I have basically endeavor to do over the past couple of weeks is finish the front side of the pattern. So mirabilias are on these big sheets of, of paper and there's, you know, half-ish on the top or on the front side and half-ish on the back side. And so I just started working on, on the top portion of her mermaid tail and now absolutely everything on the front side of the pattern, uh, regular thread stitching, cranic back stitching beads, it's done. And the next time you see this, you won't see the top portion because I'm going to roll her up and start working on the bottom half. And I've also done a lot of work on my Chatelaine 
So let me show you that. And here it is. So over the past couple of weeks, I have endeavored to complete this border, which has these little pairs of birds, both teal and kind of light brown. Um, the background for the lower portion is Gloriana's Wood Pond, which is a lot darker than it appears in the pictures. So I'm not sure how I quite feel about that, but um, I think it's looking okay. And then there's more of this tropical sea from Gloriana on the outside. Um, a little bit of Petite Treasure Braid is in here as well. And then there are some beads. And one decision that I made, now shadow lane pattern suggests that you attach beads with a full cross of invisible thread so that they lay either horizontally or vertically, which is what I've done in this center portion. But for these, I actually decided to use a half cross. One, it cuts down the time, and two, I think they lay a little bit nicer when they are vertical. Um, I'm not 100% happy with them, but I think most sections look pretty good. Um, so ultimately, you know, these beads down here are traditional, you know, they're full cross and they're laying horizontally, but um, these are vertical. And then with the larger beads here, I decided to have them radiating out from the center so they're all attached in a different orientation, but I think it looks nice. So here's the progress, and it doesn't look like a lot of work, but it actually was quite a lot of work. However, I'm, I'm liking it and it's looking nice. Okay, so those were finish, new start, whips. I'm really glad I could bring you one of every category this time. Um, I didn't have a lot of haul. Um, I did order a few beads and things for my Firefly Fairies, which I haven't worked on over the past couple of weeks. Um, so kind of, you know, just nuts and bolts stuff to finish up that design. And then of course I showed you the materials for my Autumn Fairy by Joan Elliott. Um, because those can't travel alone, I did end up picking up Cat Lovers by Jardin Privé. And my intention is, you know, I don't have fabric for this, but my intention is to use my own colors um, and still stitch the cats because I've had cats all my life and I would love to maybe even change the colors on some of the cats to represent cats that I've had in the past. Um, but anyway, so I did pick this one up. I know um, I've seen Angela Stitches and some other um, floss tubers work on this and I think it's really pretty. I did get my Fiberlicious um, fabric and thread of the month. And so I, this is a um, fat quarter of 32 count opalescent linen. And the colorway is Oh My Moose. <laughs> and it is kind of like a pale brown with some gray over it. And so I definitely have some things in mind, maybe another Bewitching Pixie from Nora Corbett. Not sure, but I think I will definitely use it. And I have um, an order for five of their hand dyed silks. And these, some of these are spring and some of these are quite Halloween-ish, which is perfectly fine. So, um, Gothic Roses, Butterfly Kisses, Spring Shower, Storm Riders, and a Burning Rose which to me is very Halloween because it's orange and yellow and purple. Um, this, so this is my second pack of these. I haven't stitched with them yet, but um, you know, these are definitely threads that I would use, um, you know, potentially in my cat lovers pattern if I can get fabric at some point for it. But um, I really like the color and feel of these so far. So these are good. 
that is it for haul. Let me talk to you about plans a little bit. Um, so I think for my Chatelaine, I will probably um, kind of set it aside since I did work pretty intensively on it um, yesterday to finish beating the section that I showed you. And I, later on today, very exciting, I'm going to be rolling up Renaissance Mermaid um, beads and all. It'll be fine. I put, you know, some cloth or felt or something in it and um, it's always been fine. And I want to start stitching the back side of the pattern. So that's the bottom of the tail and her purse. And I don't know when that will be done, but certainly once I do start working on it, it seems to go quickly. So that will definitely be a focus piece. I want to get a couple more motifs done on my Christmas garden. I want to work on the face for Autumn Fairy. Um, continue doing some kind of dress um, fill-in with uh, meeting on the turret stairs. And I don't know what else. I don't necessarily have um, any kind of rotation. Um, but I do notice that there are times when I want to stitch on something that takes a lot more thought and um, so like my Chatelaine or sometimes I feel like stitching, you know, heaven and earth, but sometimes I want something that goes a little bit faster, is a little bit simple. Sometimes I want to stitch with Cranic or put beads on. Sometimes I just want DMC. Sometimes I want silk. And so I kind of, at this time, sort of follow my inclination wherever I, wherever it wants to lead me. Um, and I think that that's been okay. I am definitely looking forward to having, um, <laughs> toward having some kind of finish, hopefully, um, in April. I have a mid-April birthday, and so I am doing a birthday start. I am starting Mirabilia's Tree of Hope. I just think it's really pretty. I've got some linen, which I need to maybe work with a little bit, maybe silk or whatever, to try to um, make it a little bit softer, but I'm just using a 32 count natural linen. And I like the look of, I like the look of it. And so this was also, I had had beads and it uses some Karen water lilies. I'll show you these again. I think I've shown you these before. So really pretty Karen water lilies, really soft. Although once again, like I noticed every time I use these on a project, either the water lilies or the thicker one that's more like pearl cotton for my counted canvas that I often have to fussy cut um, these in order to make it look like the the model that stitched so who knows um, but I did go ahead and order the DMC for this project just because like I said I've you know my craft stores are closed um, I can't really get DMC right now like just if I ran out of one color I couldn't just go pick it up and I have started worrying a little bit about dye lot issues. So um, that was another thing that I picked up is just the DMC for this project so that at least for my birthday start, I had what I needed and everything. And I think those are my plans for the next couple of weeks. Another um, thing that I've been doing is finding little snippets of things online to like everybody else to kind of watch when I'm stuck inside. On Instagram, Patrick Stewart of Star Trek and X-Men and sort of acting fame has been on his own Instagram reading a Shakespeare sonnet every day. And it's amazing. He's so good. And it's just a couple of minutes um, to read these. They're only 14 line poems, so they're not long at all. And I, it has prompted me to um, to sort of read along and try to do some background reading maybe. So um, I have been sort of on a daily basis as I listen to him, I have been also 
um, reading these two books. So this one provides a little bit of explanation and background for every sonnet. And um, this one has the original text as well as a modern text by um, James Anthony. And I also have the audiobook version of this because it is narrated partly by Stephen Fry, who does the um, Harry Potter narrations in the UK versions and is just all around like wonderful and lovely. He's an author in his own right. He's written books about poetry. He has a recent book about um, uh, like Greek and Roman mythology. He's also narrated the audiobook for that. So some really, really, really good things. So I've been enjoying kind of my daily sonnet dose. And then in the same vein, um, Jennifer Ely, the actress who starred with Colin Firth in Pride and Prejudice from way back in like 1997, so ancient, right? Um, but a gorgeous, wonderful, and my favorite version of Pride and Prejudice, my favorite adaptation of it. She is on Instagram and now she has a YouTube channel where she is reading Pride and Prejudice um, aloud and you know she's not taking the time to edit it or anything she's just kind of picking up the book and turning on the camera and and reading it and it's really 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 beautiful and lovely and wonderful so if you are a Pride and Prejudice fan I think that you it's definitely worth your time to check it out and and hear her because it's um I think she's doing a chapter or two a night and it's really 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 nice so far so anyway those are kind of a few things that have been um, occupying my time and sort of helping me <laughs> stay sane a little bit and other than that I have many other um, sort of ebooks and physical books and audio books and everything that I've been listening to as I've been cleaning out closets and uh, dressers and I'm getting ready to tackle a playroom and then in a few weeks hopefully um, when the weather in New England warms up a little bit I will be in the garden a lot. So anyway that is all from me. I hope all of you are adjusting to the new normal. I hope you're staying healthy and um, safe in whatever you're doing, whether you're still going to work or working from home or you're just home. And I love having comments from you guys and I will see you in a couple of weeks. So until then, happy stitching. Bye.